In this video, we're gonna have a look at the longer wavelengths of electromagnetic waves, so radio waves, microwaves, and infrared, and how they're used for communication, focusing mainly on radio waves and microwaves. But all three of these are overwhelmingly used for either communication purposes or cooking and heating purposes. And we'll look at that in a separate video. So right now we're just gonna look at the communication purposes and think about each of these three. So radio waves, in terms of communication, the main uses of radio waves are terrestrial TV, and I can't spell it very well. So that's like your normal TV that you'll get from the aerial outside your house. Um, it's not sky, it's not cable, it's what you would get if you didn't have those. Um, and also general radio signals. So the radio in your car, for example, um, you're using radio waves, hence the name, to pick up those signals. Uh, microwaves are used for satellite TV, so things such as Sky if you're in the UK. Um, it's also used for mobile phones and also for Wi-Fi. So if you've heard of, for example, there's a lot of um, thoughts right now about 5G and the dangers maybe of 5G, which I don't really think there are dangers personally, um, that is carried by microwaves around the community. Uh, so your mobile phone signal and your Wi-Fi signal or your 5G signal or your 3G signal are all microwave signals. Uh, finally, we've got infrared, less often used for communications, but there are still some uses. And the major one probably is fiber optic broadband. So if you've got fiber optic broadband, I'm going to write BB, um, it's being carried by infrared signals through fiber optics. Fiber optics either use infrared or visible light. Uh, these ones generally use infrared. And also another one that you might not think about is remote controls. So remote controls often have a little red light on the end. That's not infrared, that's red light. Uh, but it's there to kind of show that you need the infrared signal there. Um, and you point it at the... TV or whatever you're pointing it at, and the infrared is what carries the information for you to change that channel. So there's two main things to have a look at today, and the first is the production of radio waves. And I'm going to preface this by saying it's really hard. Um, if you are learning this for the first time, you probably haven't done electro, electric circuits yet or electromagnetism, uh, which makes this quite tricky. If you're revising it and you have covered all the content so far, you might find it a little bit easier than when you started. So the first thing we need to know about radio waves is that the production and the receipt of them are the same thing but in reverse. So what, what we do to produce them is exactly the same as how we receive them, just backwards. And radio waves are produced and received by aerials. And an aerial is simply a metal rod. Back in the day when we used to have terrestrial TV more often. I used to have my own TV in my bedroom when I was a teenager and it wasn't hooked up to satellite etc. That was too expensive so I just had terrestrial TV and often the um, aerial wouldn't extend to your room so you'd use to have a metal coat hanger or something like that as the aerial because all you need is a metal rod so if your aerial broke you could just use a metal hanger. Um, so aerials can either act as transmitters which means it gives out radio waves or as receivers. But a transmitter can act as a receiver and a receiver can act as a transmitter. It's just a metal rod. It just depends whether it's giving out or taking in radio waves. So we're gonna look at the transmitter and think about how it makes radio waves. The transmitter here is connected to an electrical circuit. So we need an electric circuit to produce radio waves. And that's because radio waves, as we know, are part of the electromagnetic spectrum. It's oscillations in electrical and magnetic fields. And to do that, we need to use an AC current. That's an alternating current. because so we need an oscillation, a forwards and backwards motion in electric and magnetic fields. And this here is the symbol for an AC power source. So mains electricity that you have in your plug, that's an AC power source. Now an alternating current causes the charges in the circuit, the electrons, to oscillate. And that oscillation produces radio waves. And that's all we need to know. No more detail than that. The alternating current causes the charges in the circuit to oscillate and that will produce radio waves because they're just variations in electromagnetic fields. When I say just, that makes it sound like it's very easy. It's not. Now those radio waves are produced around the wire 
And just like if you drop a pebble into a pond and you see the waves ripple out, the same thing happens here. The waves spread out and carry on forever and ever. They do get weaker as they go along. Now I'm going to stop at this point because at this point something important has happened. The radio waves have now reached the receiver. Okay, so the aerial here, the metal rod that's a receiver, it's just a metal rod, is now got some radio waves near it. Now the radio waves that we've made here, the radio waves here, cause the electrons or the charges in the aerial, the metal rod, and metal rods have got lots of free electrons in them, um, delocalized electrons. So radio waves cause the charges in the aerial to oscillate or move backwards and forwards, which causes an alternating current. So on this side, an alternating current causes the charges to oscillate, which causes the waves to be produced. Here, the radio waves cause the charges to oscillate, which causes an oscillating current. And the oscillating current is of the same frequency. as the emitter or as the transmitter. Now frequency is all about how many oscillations there are per second. Um, it's measured in hertz. And if this, for example, had a five hertz, it wouldn't be really much higher than that, but five hertz oscillation, five oscillations per second, this would also oscillate at five oscillations per second. Now these oscillations are then, we can't hear them. So radio waves, often people think, oh, radio waves, I can hear those because I can hear a radio. No, these oscillations, these signals, are converted, so electrical signals are converted to sound or images. So if it's TV, it'd be sound and images. If it's radio, just sound that we can then hear. So we can't hear the radio waves. The radio waves have to be changed back into something that we can hear. So that's really tricky. Um, if you're in a younger year, I'd just learn it, accept it and move on. Um, if you're in year 11, you might start to understand it a bit more having learnt about electromagnetism, um, but you might not. In that case, still accept it, learn it and move on. The final thing to know about is we need to know about how radio waves and satellites and microwaves all work together uh, to be able to produce these TV signals. So we said before that microwaves are used for satellite TV. So here I've got an uh, aerial, an emitter, and I'm going to emit from it a microwave. And that microwave is going to go up here to a satellite. Now there's two things to note here. Firstly, the microwave passes straight through the atmosphere. If you hadn't realised my beautiful drawing, here we've got the Earth, this is the atmosphere, this is space straight through the atmosphere, unimpeded or without any hindrance or obstacles. When it hits the satellite, the microwave is reflected from the metal satellite. Microwaves are reflected from metal, and one way to prove this, one of my favourite little experiments, grab your mobile phone, grab a big t um, sheet of tin foil, wrap your phone in tin foil, get someone to ring it. It won't ring, because the microwaves that carry the signal are being reflected from the tin foil. If you've got a gap in it, it will ring, but if you've completely covered it, it won't. So these microwaves then reflect and bounce back to Earth. And if you on your house have got a satellite dish, they're received by the satellite dish and you get your TV. Now this is why if you look at a block of flats and you've got quite a few satellite dishes on there, all the satellite dishes will be facing the same way. They always face the satellite and they don't move around and find the signal. They're fixed, they face the satellite. So they'll always be pointing towards that satellite. So that's microwaves. Radio waves do something different. Um, some radio waves can pass through the atmosphere, um, but it's only a small proportion. Most radio waves do this instead. I'll try and make it slightly longer wavelength. Looks a bit weird, doesn't it? Okay, so the radio wave doesn't pass straight through, it bends. It refracts, and it refracts, this is not the best diagram for this, but it refracts due to the um, 
charged ionosphere in the upper atmosphere. So it refracts due to or in the charged ionosphere. Ion O sphere in the upper atmosphere. So most radio waves, oh, that's quite wrong, sorry. Most radio waves can't get through the atmosphere, so couldn't get through to the satellite and reflect. Some, if they've got a short enough um, wavelength, can. If they're nearer to microwaves, they can. But most will do this refraction thing. They will bend um, around instead and not pass through. Some also reflect. So instead of this bending, you get an actual reflection. Uh, but I know for my specification at Excel, um, especially they want you to talk about this refraction. And if you then have your normal TV aerial, looking like so normally, terrible drawing, that can pick that up because the radio wave, although it went this way, it's now bent around. And this is quite useful because this means that the aerial and the um, receiver don't need to be in the line of sight of each other. So yes, here the signal could go like so and just go straight across. But if I draw a kind of more extreme example, let's do this in purple and let's do it here. So here's the aerial and here's the house. Actually, here's the house. Um, the signal couldn't get through to the house like that because it would be going through the earth. But because radio waves can refract around the atmosphere, it could get through like that. So we say that the aerial doesn't need to be within the line of sight of the transmitter and receiver. It can refract around, which is a real benefit. Um, it does have its limits. Not all radio waves will do this. Um, if the bend is too great it might not do it so well um, that's why often if you go into a valley you have bad tv reception or bad radio reception but um, generally it's quite a useful property so key points microwaves can pass through the atmosphere and reflect off our metal satellite uh, radio waves generally refract in the charged ionosphere of the upper atmosphere and can't pass through the atmosphere as easily and therefore we don't use them for satellite tv that's the most of the stuff you need to know about EM radiation for communication. It's a tricky part, but hopefully slightly easier than before.